Connie Molina of Milan, Italy. Good evening, Pastor and Secretary Teodoro. We are watching you live here in Milan, Italy. It's good to hear from Secretary Teodoro. That's from Milan. And well, buongiorno, Connie, Connie from Milan. And it's nice to hear from our Kababayans in Italy. Yes, you always we watch us. We hope you, you are all well. Thank you so much, Secretary. And we continue on. It's another text here. Good evening, Pastor. Naaman si Attorney Gibo ganina sa UM Campus, nagkampanya sa mga studyante. Karon nag-guest po siya sa Imang Give Us This Day program. Pastor, I hope he will be able to relay all his platforms through your programs. Yes, although, you know, uh, we need, uh, I think, uh, more time for uh, our guests to uh, uh, better uh, articulate all his uh, programs of government. But to the time that we have spent, we already have gained so much. Okay, Pastor, continue on. This is from Mrs. Rosalie Sarate of Aklan. What is your plan for us teachers? Um, I'm Rosalie. Naturally, you have a big stake in the basic education reform and even in tertiary education reform. And we will try as best as we can to ameliorate your situation. And we intend to spend about 1.5 billion pesos a year as a minimum for teacher retraining. Mm -hmm. I know, you know, we really need to motivate our teachers uh, with, with higher pay, higher, uh, better conditions of work. So we'll try also to reduce the amount of shifting that we have mm -hmm. uh, by, by addressing the shortfall of classrooms and by making smart schools you know, as much as possible uh, so that teachers also have the ability to get information as quickly as possible. Now, it's not that easy, though, to ameliorate conditions of our teachers because normally other government employees follow. Uh, the, recently, the paradigm was teachers, policemen, and soldiers have a parity of, of salaries. And uh, as much as we can, we, we shall try uh, to ameliorate their situation. Thank you so much, Secretary. There you have your answer, Ms. Rosalie Sarat of Aklan. This is from George Pansakal of Jeddah, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Good evening, Pastor. Being assistant leader, what can you share to Secretary Teodoro to attain good leadership as what you have done in the Kingdom Nation? I've been asked that question uh, many, many times. What I can share is, uh, you know, a leader with a brain and a heart will go very, very far. When you have a heart of compassion and love for what you are doing to your people, then uh, the uh, development and the, uh, that compassion and love would, uh, would be felt. Thank you, Pastor. We continue on. This is from Mariel Obupi Los Baños. Good evening to you, Pastor, and to Secretary Tudoro. I am one of the million viewers of Sunshine Media Network International. I agree with Pastor's advocacy of zero corruption in the Philippines. My question is, are you for zero corruption in the Philippines? If you are, do you have specific plans or programs how to carry this out? Thank you. Uh, yeah, of course, zero corruption is always an end, and it's always a goal. Naturally, we just as we want to eradicate all evils in society, we have to do the same with corruption. However, corruption is, uh, to, to me, as I said earlier, should be addressed on both ends, on the preventive side and on the exemplary side, let's put it that way. And I forgot to add earlier that to have an effective deterrent against corruption, there must also be an effective punishment. And punishment is based on evidence, actually evidence gathering or else there will be no justice if there's no evidence. Mm -hmm. And the judiciary also has to be equipped with more resources you know, to enable it to dispense adequate justice. I, I read somewhere before that a murder trial, for example, in the United States costs about a million dollars funded by the state just to ensure that there's adequate protection for all due process for the prosecution and for the accused. That's why I have consistently opposed the death penalty here, is I cannot in conscience stomach the fact that a person may be put to death when there, at the time I was in Congress, 400 courts without any public attorneys. So the possibility that an innocent ma uh, man or woman would be put to death is present. If that is present in other countries, what more in the Philippines with, mm. with, with more limited <coughs> resources? Yes. That's another component, an effective and functioning judiciary, not really to address, address grievances. 
Thank you so much, Secretary. We continue on. This is from an anonymous texter. Good evening, Pastor. We would like to ask a question to Secretary Chudoro. There are so many qualified candidates running for president. How can we be assured that we will not be mistaken if we will vote for you? That is the challenge I pose to students. <coughs> Your assurance is the amount of work and involvement you put in this election. You cannot be assured totally by taking our word for it. You have to search for the truth yourself. And there is no excuse for any Filipino now not to be able to do that. Why? Because information is at your fingertips. For example, papers abound every day. You have normally access to radio, TV, the internet, and internet cafes. So you must know the issues that face you, even as a farmer. Alam niyo naman po ang mga issue na humaharap sa inyo bilang magsasaka. Ang mababang presyo ng, uh, ng inyong uh, pinaghirapan pagdating ng panahon ng ani at tataas ang presyo kapag kayo rin tatanim. No? Yan ang mga problema. Ngayon, ano ang mga plataforma ng mga kandidato? Palagay ko ho, medyo saturated na ang ating airwaves, radio waves at print sa aming mga sinasabi. Ngayon, kayo na hong bahala maghusga. Yan ang pinakamagandang security po sa inyo na gamitin natin ang kakayahan natin. Yan nga po, Pastor, ang sinasabi ko eh. Yung likas na galing at talino ng Pilipino, gamitin natin. Lalo-lalo na pagkatapos ng eleksyon. Kapag umupo lang tayo, hinayaan natin na huwag na tayong makialam sa gobyerno. Huwag na nating alamin ang ginagawa. Huwag tayong magbigay ng ating opinion. Huwag tayong makibaka. Talagang walang mangyayari. So, the best guarantee is that do not totally rely on us. Reliance must be made on the, own, on the informed judgment of the texter and on every citizen for that matter. Mm. Yes. Because in democracy without a participate, participative citizenry, which forms a, a very strong force, non-governmental force called public opinion, it, 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 it's sort of a myth. Because it's representative government. Mm. And, and it doesn't stop in elections. Although it could be very dangerous if public opinion is not informed. Particularly when a matter of conscience is involved and a minority is repressed by a majority. It could also be a very, very wrong thing. That's why you have your Bill of Rights to protect you from that. Thank you so much, Secretary. We continue on. How do you feel not being supported by your own uncle? Nevertheless, I support you from Boy Guerrero of Calamba City Hall. Well, uh, I, I said earlier, the country is composed of 92 million Filipinos. Their futures and their lives and the position of your country as an entity is at stake. These are the important issues. The important issues are what do you intend to do for your country? The personal familial feelings should never be put into the equation of country. Because country means Filipino people. And the, as I, far as I know, country is not owned by any family, or should not be. Thank you so much, Secretary. Continue on. Ako po si Mel ng Pangasinan. Disabled po ako, pero nakatapos po ako ng kolehiyo. Till now, mahirap maghanap ng work. Ano po ang magagawa ng isang gibo para mabigyan kami ng chance to work? na naimbagarabi kang kamel uh, kakailan tayo ng tiga pangasinan there is where your leadership comes in there are non-discrimination laws in place so we get the labor department to really take a good look into the plight of our uh, differently abled let's call them differently able they're not disabled they're differently abled brothers and sisters I mean and normally they com compensate for what they lack with something else. For example, they think a lot more than we do. They, they have to do things with much more difficulty than we do, and they, they, they cope very, very well. And that's where the Department of Labor must come in. And more than that, you really have to take into, into your confidence also the manufacturers and, and uh, the establishment owners and talk to them on a one on one. It's not merely the differently able to have a problem, but graduates of non-named colleges or graduates of state universities and colleges 
who feel sometimes that they're discriminated against. And it takes a lot of dialoguing and networking with these people. I mean, we can put lay down the law, but it's better just to try to facilitate and be a bridge. And that's, that's, a, that's the role of a leader. That's the role of your cabinet members to try to build that bridge. Maraming maraming salamat po, Secretary. We continue on. Good evening, Pastor, and to Secretary Gibo. We were there sa forum ng mga presidential boss dito sa Cebu, sa Cebu International Convention Center. At isa po kayo na pumunta. We've heard your answers, and I think kayo po ang siyang may pinakamagandang sagot sa lahat ng mga presidential boss. Kaya lang... Marami ang nagkomento na okay daw sana kayo na maging presidente sa bansa. Subalit, ang problema lang, inasa ilalim kayo ng administrasyon ni Arroyo. Ano po ang masasabi ninyo?